Hey everyone, Miss Rose from the LaGrange Park Library here. I'm going to show you how to make some book page art, which is why the camera is lower and I'm just gonna turn my head for a second to say hi. Um, a couple things that you're going to need today. If you got the kit from us at the library, great. Um, we may have a few extra while supplies last. Um, in the kit, you had a paint set, some book pages, a canvas that was wrapped in plastic so you can take the plastic off. You had what's called a fine liner pen. The caps are really hard to get off of these. Um, a larger paintbrush. And what we call, I'm not entirely sure if it's pronounced gesso or gesso, but it's this amazing stuff that is kind of like glue, but it's not glue and it's really cool. So that's what was in the kit. If you didn't get a kit, you can get any of those things at an art store. Um, the paints are watercolors. Um, you don't necessarily need to have exactly what we have here. The main thing that you do need is the gesso. Um, that is kind of what makes the whole project. So the book pages, you can get those out of um, a book if you have one at home that's really old. Um, it's just make sure you ask someone before you start tearing a book up. Um, or sometimes those little free libraries might have like an older book in it that it's usually okay um, to tear those apart. Um, definitely not something you're planning on reading um, or um, that belongs to someone else. Um, and then I would save it because there's lots of things that you can do with book crafts. So let's get started. So let me just turn this camera down a little bit more so you can see. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to measure our book pages to the canvas. Now, like I said, these aren't going to fit exact, so you might have a little bit of space, and that's okay. And they're probably going to overlap unless you prefer them not to, and then you can trim them down. So I'm going to have mine overlap a little bit and then cut a little bit off both the edges. So some extra things you might wanna have with you when you do this project are a ruler and a pencil. So you can do that. Some scissors. And then you want a cup of water for your, if you're using watercolors. And then you're also going to need a hair dryer unless you have the patience to wait a long time for your gesso to dry. So then I'm just gonna cut my pages. And you know, I know some people with their art like things to be very precise. I'm not so much like that, so I'm okay if it's a little bit off, not exactly straight. If it doesn't completely cover, we'll be fine. But if you do like things more precise, then you can take extra time to make sure that that's how it works. And let me just check and make sure, and we're good. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use this gesso and we're gonna paint it all over the canvas. So you don't really need a lot, just a thin layer. This is acting as the glue to hold down the pages. And you definitely probably want to put something down. I just kind of got some on the table. It comes off really easily though. So you want to make sure you get it in the corners and on the edges. Because those are the parts you really are going to want things to stick. So go over like that. And we can always go back over if we need a little bit more, but you may just want to go down the edges a little bit to make sure it got everywhere on the edge. Okay, and I should have done that. Okay, we're done there. Then we're gonna take our pages, set them down. Now, if you get this gesso on your fingers, it's totally fine, comes off easily. Whoops, that's a little forever and as you can see if you need to reposition now the pages here I'm using are pretty thin so they might wrinkle a little so you can use your fingers to kind of smooth out those wrinkles 
The other thing you wanna do, if you are overlapping, make sure you get some of that gesso here. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use that gesso to paint over the pages. This is what's gonna make it easy for us to draw or paint on. And what you wanna do if you are overlapping, go in the direction so that it helps smooth down that overlap. So you don't wanna go this way where it's gonna like maybe make that come up like that. You wanna go this way. And same thing all over. Now you, the pages might start to wrinkle here and that's okay. We can use our fingers to smooth out any big wrinkles, but again, you know, sometimes art is imperfect and that is okay. So we'll just do that. And we're done. So here you just wanna to check to make sure that it's sticking down in the corners and if not, maybe put a little bit underneath. Again, if you have any big wrinkles that you wanna smooth out, you can use your fingers. This will dry clear. So if you think, oh, that's a really big smudgy spot, don't worry about it. It's gonna dry completely clear. You can kinda of see now it's not 100% clear, but it will be by the time by the time we're done. But yeah, like here is a wrinkle I might wanna smooth out. And you know what, sometimes I'm just gonna make it worse and that's okay. It's a little flatter at least, or you could leave it if you wanted it to be. It's just the nature of the project, it's gonna happen. But again, this stuff will come off your fingers, so if you need to do that, no worries. All right, now you can do one of two things here. If you want to go do something else, you can let this sit and dry. It takes a while, though. It might take a couple hours to be completely dry on its own. Or you can use your hair dryer, or there's also a crafting tool called a heat tool that you can use. So you plug in that hair dryer, you want to use the hot setting. So it's going to help to dry it. I am not going to actually dry it now because I have another example right here that I've already dried. So that way you don't have to listen to the hair dryer because you probably know what that sounds like. But it usually takes, I would say, about two minutes for it to dry. It might be a little sticky, like you might feel it still being sticky and just let it maybe air dry for another minute or two before you keep going because um, that'll just, the stickiness is coming from the heat and that'll, that'll go away after a minute or two. So I'm gonna put this one off to the side. That's the main part of the project. So you've done that. Now, here's one that I did earlier. You can Google book page art and I kind of, borrowed this idea from another one. I took a little bit of liberty with it. I'm also not the world's best freehand drawer, so um, you could also trace something if you're like me and you're not great at actually drawing things by freehand. What I did here was I just made all the letter I's into raindrops. Um, so you could do something like that. And I just, I did this little balloon to sort of demonstrate to you too. The watercolors, the nice thing, and the reason that I use the watercolors is so you can still see the words underneath the paint. And so I have another one here that I'll add to just to show you. This one, um, again, I used a little bit darker paint so you can kind of see some of the words, but not as many, and then definitely not under the black paint. But you could also do th fun things like this, find phrases to highlight. So I'm gonna do one other little thing just to show you. So the thing about this is pencil will not work on here. So if you're thinking, oh, well, I'll trace it in pencil. If it doesn't come out, I'll erase it. It's not gonna work. So you might wanna try tracing it tracing whatever you want like out ahead of time on a piece of paper or in this case a paper towel if you'd like to um, just to practice before you put it on your thing but again if it doesn't work you can just try to rip this off and use those other pages I don't know if it'd come off it's pretty much on there but um, you know you could always try something different so 
Um, these fine liner pens are really nice for this though because they're really thin lines and they go on really lightly. So if I wanted to add to this project, again, not great at drawing. So I'm trying to think of what I could draw. I'll just draw another heart because I know I can draw a heart. And you could also, you could really kind of, if you didn't like what you drew, you know, turn it into something else or paint over it. So here is where, so with this paint set came a nice little brush. Here's where the water would come in handy. You could use these for water. I just got a big cup. I thought it was a little bit easier. And then you take your, just a dab of water and let's say I'm gonna do orange. Then you just use that and then fill in what you want to fill in and it's really nice and the less water you use the darker the color just like I'm sure you guys have used watercolors before and that is that and that's how you do book page art if you have any questions feel free to email us at children's at lplibrary.org and send us your finished products. Okay, we'd love to see what you do. So email at children's library, children, oh, goodness, children's at lplibrary.org. I'll send it in the email. Okay, thanks everybody. Have fun.